we all remember the Jersey yeah. Generals. Our special guest is Andy Carino. He played for the Jersey Generals back then. We'll introduce him and welcome him in, and we'll, welcome you know what? Andrew, good to see you. Before we get into other things, Jersey Generals, that was pretty cool. You played on the same team with Herschel Walker. When he came out of college, the number one draft, he, could, he did not go to the NFL, goes to right. the Jersey Generals. I think you have a story where he comes in by helicopter, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, 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 Brian Gumbel was there. You, you learn right later on, but we were, we're in practice. We hear that he's signing with us, he's coming with us, and, but we don't know what to expect, where, how, and, and the wind starts blowing and a helicopter lands <laughs> on, 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 on the, the University of uh, Central Florida campus. Um, and at a, we're in the middle of nowhere back then. There was, you know, that's when Disneyland yeah, just went up, so it was 100 years ago. <laughs> and it, it was like just crazy. It was crazy stuff. You know, I have to say, that was a pretty cool helmet. I really liked it, you know, good just design. the whole look, and it was a good yeah. design. Uh, the year after that, uh, Donald Trump yeah. bought yep. the uh, Jersey Generals. And it was, you know, had a it lot was of publicity, an, right? It was an exciting time. <laughs> yeah, it was. You know what? We're going to move forward because the, the Giants are in the news uh, mm. nowadays, but not not in a, uh, in a positive light. But we'll go over to our next graphic if we can, uh, because here we go. We got you coming out of the tunnel. Mm. Uh, you, um, you tried out for the Giants. They signed you to a uh, contract. Uh, there was a legendary story where during a scrimmage you knocked Lawrence Taylor out cold and all of that. So, I mean, you had some... But <laughs> Still my that's favorite not, story. That's your favorite story. <laughs> but, you know, really, that's not what we want to ask you tonight. What we want to ask you is... Because when when you played at that moment in time, Bill Parcells was on the coaching staff, and not even the head coach. They were so stacked. Bill Belichick, who you have a relationship with, a friendship to this day. Yes. Okay. What we'll go over to the next graphic, and then you jump right in. What is going on with the Giants? Did mm. you ever see uh, something like this coming with the dis a lack of discipline, etc.? I you know I live out in Westchester County now. I was down in Iona Prep. You have uh, Will Tamara's, you know. The, the family was there. It was always such a a, a, a tight knit family. If you could, no better word for it, there were the, you, from the Coughlins, from from the Lombardis, from the Belichicks, from the, from the. Now it's like it just seems like the, it, it, there's no there's no integrity in the, in the in the unit anymore. It seems like they fall apart at the seams. But Andy, where I think he got into trouble, I mean that's true. There was so so lax with the whole boat story and guys doing what. The, then, you know, he tried to, you know, lay the law down. He started disciplining, you know, Cromarty and a couple of the other guys, Jenkins, and now to say, hey, wait a minute, you let them get away with all of that. Now you want to start disciplining? You, you can't pick your battles. You have to be consistent. You know, I was telling the story when I was in Little League, we had a, a, one of our players was a great player, but he didn't want to sell raffles. The coach says, you're the best player on this team, but you're not good as the other 10 guys. If you can't do it, you, you're not going to play with us. Um, you know, you can't pick and choose your, your stars. Right. We've had a little bit in college. We had it with the generals. You know, we, you know, when you lose cohesiveness, you're going to lose your team. You wouldn't see that happen in, in New England. You wouldn't. You wouldn't see. It's not tolerated. Come on, he missed, right. missed the practice. I'll pay the fines. He had a birthday party. Right. You, can't, you can't do that. Right. You know, Andy, you were a standout superstar, whatever you want to call it, on the college level. Rutgers, just to put it into perspective, you were the captain of the defense, and on that, on your team back then, you had none other than Bill Pickell and Duran Cherry, both of them. Um, you just mentioned, you said that wouldn't go on in New England. It's very, very interesting. There's a tie-in between the New England Patriots, specifically Bill Belichick and Rutgers. I mean, uh, you know, in the last Super Bowl that they just won, not one, but five mm. players from Rutgers on that team. It's not a coincidence. The assistant coach is his son, Steve, who went to Rutgers. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, Rutgers, you know, a lot of these guys came during the time of Shiano. I went down to a practice to see Bill. There was about there was 12 guys on the New England roster and the preseason roster and about 10 or 12 on the, uh, the Tampa Bay roster at the time. Shiano was a very disciplined guy. It, it left nothing on, off the table. You know, he wouldn't let you put the ball over the end zone. If you, he he had so many rules, and he was a little bit tough, tough and tight. But you know what? You want you want a guy of character because in the fourth quarter, with you know five minutes left, you want a guy with character. Talent's great, but it only take you so far. Character is going to make you win football games. Yes, sir. You know, it's interesting. So we talked a little while ago about how the NFL has changed. How do you think the college game has changed over the years? Well, you you know you see. What these kids in the UCLA, you see, I just think a lot of these kids are just, they're, they're brought up too quickly. They're, 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 they're 
nurtured too much. They're praised too much. I think there's a lot of there's not a lot of responsibility. But what Rutgers had a lot this year of problems the last couple of years. You you can't let these kids run on their own. You you have to discipline them. You see good programs that stay stay good. The stable stable the stable programs stay good because they watch their, they watch their kids. I, I just think like. Um, it's it's challenging. It just, it's a little bit too much for all these kids. Well, at least in college football, I mean, they stay three or four years. Where in college basketball, if you're good, you're looking to leave yeah, in the, one the, year. Well, that's all about you know, the TV the marketing, money. the you NBA, the, even in the NFL. I mean, you know, the, the, it's like their farm system. So the, yeah, it's 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 tough. I mean, financially for these kids, they stay three years. Look at the kid on Penn State now. He he takes kickoffs. He's going to be burnt out. He's going to be a junior. He's going to you know he he gets fifty touches a game. Yeah. Uh, uh, number twenty six. Was it Barkley? What's his name? Barkley. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Shaquan Barkley. He's just you right. know, he was a Rutgers guy supposedly, but then he went to Penn State. You know, we want to ask Andy. I mean, uh, Rutgers. Uh, the history of Rutgers goes back farther than <laughs> many, of, if not all. Right. You know, first game ever. Yeah. First game ever. Right. Princeton. Things like this. When you look at High Point Solution Stadium, that's what they call it. You yeah. marvel. It's players like you that you know help build that in a sense. I, I may have talked before when we were getting recruited, they told us to take out the end zone seating and put more bushes in because, you know, <laughs> we had 23,000 know, feet uh, seating then. <laughs> that we went funny. to our betting alliance for our big games, but uh, now it's an amazing that's, place. That's Just amazing. on the Purdue game the other day, they said once Rutgers really gets in the groove, it's going to be one of the most outstanding places to play in the in the nation. Well, really what do you mean by that? Once they get in the groove, well, how once we start compete? winning the big games. But how is that going to happen in it's, the Big uh, Ten? It's I mean, definitely going to happen. I within five oh, years will be in the playoffs. <laughs> Who's going to go there the most versus players. Ohio State or? <laughs> we got Big Ten money. They built that big market, that hundred million dollar facility. I don't know. We, you, you, now we're beating. You know, we we played Penn State tough. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get those recruits. Now that Ohio State, Michigan lost, and Penn State lost. They're going to start spreading the wealth. You better get Urban Meyer. Or, or, you yeah. know, you got to get I a think Yes is going to do a good job. He surprised us. Yeah. He's had some falls, but he's, <laughs> we're on the build. Well, Five years, right. mark my words, you're going to be in the playoffs. How many times have I said I would love to have a team to root for locally, like in, in, in the college playoffs? I mean, well, we that would up, be phenomenal. We were, we were That's up why to like fourth Penn in the State country when Shiano was there. We were up in the fourth. Yeah. Like, no, right. Right. You said, like you said, there's no excuse why Rutgers shouldn't be a powerhouse and St. John's shouldn't be a powerhouse just because, as he said, look at all of the, the fertile, ta- you, know, you, just, you know, there's just so just many have to get it going, go then over. it feeds on You're itself. Right. That's it. <laughs> you know what? And again, football's in the news for some good, some not, 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 not so good, but we're going to go over to our next graphic if we can. Uh, the conversation and the topic yeah. just uh, does not go away. CTE in the NFL. Anthony, you saw that in the yeah. back page of the paper? Yeah. You know, Andy, the, the, the Daily News ran like a four-part article and just wondering, you know, what the future of, of football looks like, and, it, and it's pretty bleak. Now they're saying they're going to be able to test pretty soon for CTE in, in living players, and if that comes out that, you know, the, the majority of these guys, you know, have that disease, I mean, that could be the end of football as we know it, no? The doctor, Omu, I can't think of his name, it's Omu, but he uh, diagnosed someone most recently, it's the news today, named McNeil, who had, um, he, he thought that he had ALS, but he thought he's, uh, he recognized CTE. Yeah. When he was alive, he had just passed. Now they checked his brain, he did in fact have it. Yeah. So they don't, they're not where they need to be yet. But it's been all the news today. You're going to see that people are going to, you know, there's some, there's some you know, brain damage. And I think they happening. definitely swept it under the rug, don't you? Do you oh, think? it's, it's, they're laughing today, talking about Goodell worried about gambling, but you let, you let these players' head, heads explode. Right. I mean, it's, you know, you can't, like I was saying before, you know, if I ride a 4, 5, 9, 40, I'm, I'm traveling about 18, 19 miles an hour. If the other person's running the same speed, it's a 20, a 38 mile an hour collision. That's how people die. You know, right. so and there also was an article that there's there's a lack of offensive linemen, and I, I think the reason for that is they're the ones that are in there every play, and it's not just the violent; right. it's it's just the, the, the steady hitting that's it's a the, problem. It's the cumulative effect. Right, right. You the know, before the movie came out and before this became front and center, right. um, two two years before that on this show, I, I tried to point something out. Uh, there was a documentary that came out. Before the movie made it, Holly, went Hollywood with it, but there was a documentary that had all of the components, the real life uh, situations with, the, with that doctor that they right. portrayed and, uh, and all of the players. And not one network picked up the documentary. It was Frontline. It was Frontline did that show. Frontline did, you're right. Yeah. And I saw I think that it was long before of, I saw I, the movie. I think yeah. it was called League of Denial. 
Okay, okay. Uh, okay, but, okay. You know, but, the point of the matter, but the point of the matter is you know what I'm talking about. It was a right. documentary done by Frontline. Right. They shopped it. I remember seeing it on the yeah. air. They, remember when I said yes. that? They shopped it with CBS, uh, Fox, uh, ESPN. What do they all have in common? They're partners. Tied in. They're, They're tied tough. in. Mm, right. Nobody took it, ladies and gentlemen. I remember pointing out, you know who, who ran that documentary? PBS, right. Channel 13. They were yeah. the only ones who would touch it. it. Nobody touched it. So there's n none, none of the ones that I just mentioned have a moral high ground now to say, oh, look at Roger Goodell, or look at what's going on. They were all complicit. Right. Agree? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. the, the money involved is, puts a lot of stop clauses around things. Well, you know what? Let's, you know, we'll go from one extreme to the other. We're going to go over to our next graphic. We have somebody that's defying <laughs> yeah, it, all it, the time and all logic. Andy, he really, I mean, he really is amazing. You know, 40 years old, no, no signs of slowing down. They get rid of the backup quarterback. <laughs> we don't, this guy's going to go on forever. Yeah. So the question, you know, how does he do it? So he wrote a book, uh, the, you know, the TB12 method. And the subtitle is How to Achieve a Lifetime of Peak Performance. But there's, there's one thing in there that I wanted to talk to you about and get your uh, thoughts on. And he goes into what, his workouts, and he calls it this muscle pliability. That he says there's much, much more important than strength is to, is to be, uh, you know, he gets, yeah, he gets these massages and soft uh, muscles and targeted, uh, yeah. you know. So do you, do you buy well, into that? Back when I played, if you look at the movie North Dallas 40, guys, it was all glamorized drinking and going out and partying. And, you, you know, I met a Green Bay Packer here, they, Bob Hyland, and you remember McGee saying, you know, he had drinking all night and he went up and scored a couple of touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I was one of the few guys, in, like Nebraska, Maryland, had, had, had people training and working out and conditioning for football. Most guys came to camp to get in shape, you know. But... I, I strongly believe. I would tell Mike, I played football until I was like 39, 40 years old with the Brooklyn Mariners because I was always I was in the health club business, so I was always training. I was always loved running. Work, I worked. I love working out more than I love playing the games. And the longevity you know, gets, gets put in place by the training. So this is not a mystery to me. Because he says so he heavy lifting is actually you know, counterproductive. Oh, yeah. counterproductive. I, 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 I cross trained long before Bo Jackson made it popular. But, but, but um, they also have a lot of better rules for the NFL. If you remember, they used to, they used to pile drive the quarterbacks. You know, it's, it's a lot safer environment to be an NFL player today than it was then. There's less well, hitting during camp. I'm a else. Mets fan, and I, I think of what went on last year with, with Syndergaard and Cespedes. And, you know, these guys are bulking up. Right. And that's not like an athletic body. Then, you know, they try to run the bases, and they're, they're cramping right. up. They're you know, pulling things. Well, everybody's and, getting Tommy John surgery. It's not even a question because they're, they're ripping their, their tendons. They're throwing the ball 100 miles an hour. It's, even the Yankees with Sanchez and yeah. even Brian Cashman said, you know, he, he put on with it. You know, maybe he, now he doesn't have the flexibility to shift to, to block these balls that gave him trouble. <laughs> so I think there's something to it. There's no, you know, Andy, we were, t we were t uh, talking about uh, the fact that you're in the gym business and all of that. I ran into somebody that knows you from a lot of years. His name is Peter. He's a, uh, he worked for um, uh, FedEx or UPS or something like that. Okay. And back in Brooklyn, he tells a story where you said to him, hey, I, I, you know, I have a piece of equipment that I need delivered. I guess he had a, a, a truck that he was able to transport it. Okay. But it's on the sidewalk yeah. in Brooklyn, uh, <laughs> Kings Highway. I don't know if this story will ring a bell after a while. But <laughs> here's a piece of equipment on the sidewalk and four bodybuilders are standing there looking at it, and they can't pick it up. They got to go it up. It comes in. Uh, yeah, and they have to go up a uh, flight of stairs with it. Yeah. Andy pulls up. He goes, "What's going on?" And they go, "Well, we can't get it up the stairs." He carried it up by himself. Oh my God! True story. <laughs> well, I used to, I used to convince people I was so Superman, but there's a lot of leverage involved. He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes. I go, uh, I go. You know, I never heard that one, but yeah, uh, we'll put that. You know, that's we'll why put, I'm crippled today. We'll, 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 we'll throw that one. Now you, you know, you're still, you're still getting around. You're still getting around. You know. Pretty good, but my my brother brings up a great point, and, and as you said, probably there would be um, the, the, the perfect, the middle ground would be strength training and flexibility yeah, well, he stretching. Called, Brady you, called it a ho holistic approach. Yeah, it's yeah. everything: yeah. Yeah. mental Diet, toughness, diet, toughness, diet, toughness, toughness uh, well, he drinks the year water. To share it, said you know gluten free and yeah. all that. And even when you think about Ichiro in baseball. Right. I mean, this guy would stretch for hours. Right. He never, you know, he never got hurt. Right. So like, there's got to be uh, some kind of. You know, I got to ask Andy. He says, drink 112 ounces of water a day. Oh, wow. <laughs> he starts his day with 20 ounces of water. Wow. There was no tomatoes. He's got yeah. some weird things. Well, well <laughs> tomatoes supposedly uh, uh, add to arthritis. The, 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 the uric, it takes yeah. uric acid out of yeah. your body, but tomatoes, if you if you have an arthritis situation like I do. 
not the best thing for you. To yeah. me, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, now I have to eat ginger, pineapple. Gotta watch what you I eat, have to right? watch my diet. I wish I was doing it earlier because I would even felt, you know, I feel better, better today because I'm doing a better diet. Well, mm. and how things tie in. I mean, you're, you're mentioning how much water, you know, he suggests to drink. You were supposed to be on our last episode. You didn't show up. I was worried about you right, because right. I know you wouldn't stand this up. Right. You you called up. You said someone very close to you. Right. He was in the hospital and De they thought he had a heart dehydration. So it shows you how important all it is the symptoms of a heart attack. There was like he, he passed every test just because he was dehydrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know we're going to go over to our next a graphic if we can. Back to the Giants. You're standing for the national anthem, standing. Mm. And um, behind you, and you got the beard going on there. Yeah. But, yeah you look That's good. Gary Jeter. Yeah. There's uh, Lawrence Taylor, Harry Carson. Now, well, uh, I hate to, I hate to put you on the spot, but, you but know, somebody, somebody uh, tried to sit for the national anthem. You mm. know, you think, you know, Harry Carson would, no pun intended, you know, stand for that? I mean, that was a different time. Well, I, it's, it wasn't even thought wasn't of. Wasn't even thought of. My dad was a Marine, right. a rest of soul. I mean, there was. I have friends today that are Marines. I mean, my friend Charlie. Well, I ha, I, and they, they even have some servicemen saying that, or women saying that it's okay. I don't know what it, if they're paying them, but any service person I know now I think it's disgraceful. Mm. I, I have. I couldn't tell you who's playing anymore. I can tell you half the names in the NFL. I don't watch the games anymore. It's disgusting. Right. I mean, if you don't like it, go to another, go to another place, go to play in Canada. It's sort of dying out, no? It's a We're national a football weeks, league. It's our nation. Not much about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, Hopefully. It's, yeah. You know well, the I, Veterans Day, they, everybody, veterans they, they, way, everybody right. stood yeah, up, which I thought it was weird that they could all stand up for Veterans Day. Weird. I think they'll yeah, make right. one person down. Right. No. Yeah, I, I agree. It's something that the, you know, the league is, is saddled with at this point because they painted themselves into a corner to a degree. But, uh, you know, even when we were talking about the problems that the Giants have in terms of discipline or maybe Odell Beckham needed to be reined in. When you saw you standing there and you look at Lawrence Taylor and you look at Harry Carson, if, the leadership o if Odell there, right? was on that team, you know, forget about Coughlin, forget that, about that's, McAdoo. That's a key that thing. would have been handled internally, correct? Yeah, I mean, Somebody I can't even. I can't stuff yeah, them I mean, in a locker. The I can't leader. even think of, of a player when I the times I played the teams I was around that you know was with George Allen that would tolerate any misbehavior right. on a team. That there was no star. You know, I mean even LT when he was having his concerns, his problems, his challenges, it never became. It was part of the forefront. But then they put him. They suspended him. But it was never like you never saw it in a locker. You never saw it on the field. Right. He came. He right. practiced hard. Right. Right. There no was no. Could, there was no. No, could no ever. slacking. Right. You figure Eli is the leader, but he's not an he's in not your that, face. He's not as vocal. No, he's not as vocal. Kind of he's not a vocal. Kiki right. said that a long time ago. Yeah. He wasn't as vocal. Right. Where, where, where I just kind of, just, you know, lost all, you know, with, with Odell. He's, he's, he's a great talent. But when they ask him, when he, you know, when he, when he acts like he's urinating on a, right. you know, fire hydrant, and they say to him, like, do you realize, like, you know, you, you know, you penalize the team. And they said, well, what, you know, if you got backed up. And he they said, were still losing by two touchdowns. Goes, you know what he said? <laughs> I wouldn't care if we got backed all the way, if we had a kickoff yeah, from the five-yard line. When he well, said that, I'm like, how is that? It's you just, know. Uh, it's I was just, watching this morning about 2 a.m., Mr. 3000, the movie when yeah. he was all about he was being selfish. And when he got older and more mature, he became a, a no. team player. Mm -hmm. And he, he gave up his 3,000 hit just, just, to, just to help the team. you got to be a team Some player. Some of them don't I, get I, it. Before Beckham got hurt, and I feel bad he got hurt and all that, but – I would have not. I would have just traded him and got, got three menial, menial yeah. players that that want to. Because eleven guys cohesively are a team, not one guy. That they tried to deal with it, but yeah. didn't right. work it was out. Just as my brother said, it was a great point when McAdoo tried to uh, impose discipline. And the ones saying, they hey. did say, "Hey, <laughs> why you, you know?" To me, yeah, you're being, you can't have two sets of rules. You're being selective, right. right? Andy, the time always flies when you uh, go by, but boy. we want to go over to an important graphic because someone was very, very important to you, so we'll go over to, a, to our next graphic if we can. Tell us about Pudgy Walsh. Pudgy Walsh. When I finished playing football, we never mentioned on the show, I got disgusted of the whole business of, the, of football. And, I, and I, my dad was a fireman. Pudgy was a fireman, rest of his soul. And, uh, and I, I said, I got I to gotta, I gotta find this team. And, and I, went and met him, I met him one day in a firehouse by Camden Plaza. I go, listen, I don't know if you guys pay people. I don't want to hear about it. I want to know about it. I just want to come. I want to play football. I just want to play for the love. He goes, you came to the right place. We don't. I don't make any money. You don't make any money. We just play, and it was the best experience of my life. He had 650 victories as a coach. Started 1962. Started the team. 
that's that's a, that picture's taken me and my friend Anthony Pecorello, whose son, by the way, is a superstar kicker in Shamrock High School, 50-yard wow. field goal. Wow. This this year, he's top kicker in the, number two in the country as a junior. Wow. And a great really? punter. But Pudgy and I took that picture about two weeks before he passed. I was at his bedside. I got a call when I was at Little Lily having dinner. I, I was fortunate enough to be with his son, uh, John, Anthony Pecorella, and a couple other guys, um, McGee, um, to watch him, uh, uh, to bid farewell to him. Great guy, just committed to to, to, to football. And, and, and just, he was in Sports Illustrated. You could Google him. Great human being. I, yeah. I loved playing for that team. I say a prayer every every for every game that I was, that I was fortunate yeah. to play with a bunch of guys. For, and we all stood for it. You know, we had... Guys, Danny, sir, Courtney, well, we had guys dying in 9-11 off that team, firemen, servicemen, cops, veterans. You know, that was football was about to me. That's what football, that's yeah. what football Great guy. Thank about. you for bringing him up. Yeah. yeah. And everything that you just said, you, you, you said it so well, and your dad being a Marine and what – what was instilled in you is what's... My father used to sing the Marine Corps anthem. Wake up, it's time to, you know, the, the, the halls of Montezuma to show to me in the morning. <laughs> it's time to give up in the morning. He's going to blow Reveille for us, like, <laughs> what is, what is, you know, with his hand. But, I mean, but it, this is the country we live in. I mean, we, right. they provide for us. I said, put your hand over your heart, stand, and put another hand over your heart. If you feel pain, it's unjust. Unju yeah, you know what? I, I like, like You know what? Uh, I mean, I'm Italian. I've, or, I've been involved in Christmas parties with, 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 and you know, mafia raids. And I said, I didn't feel that good. I want to call Al Sharpton. But listen, you, you, you feel pain. Put your hand over your heart. Right, that's, that's, like that's, that. Respect that's your pain. But stand. People right. die for us. Right. You know? show Look at Pat Tillman, what he did. Right. He left and he died. Right. Sure. You know I mean? Respect. Yeah. And, and no question about it. And just as you said, what, what you extracted out of football was the best of it because – you played for the Generals, you played for the Giants, and yet you said those, you, you pointed out that gentleman and you wanted to come on the show and specifically mention him. Those right. were the best years of your football you know, career where, again, it wasn't, it wasn't for a paycheck. No, so it was just for we, love of the game, pure. Andy, pure stuff. we couldn't respect you any right. more than we do. We're, you know, we're very proud that you're a friend of the show. We yeah. want to wish you and your family a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thank you for coming All down. And we look forward to having you on again. All the best. Real soon. Guys. My pleasure. All right. Thank you.